my talk is on uh, horizontal tears of the meniscus. Uh, so as by definition, it's a tear extending from the apex of the meniscus going on to the periphery uh, parallel to the tibial surface. But it does not always follow this definition. There may be some oblique tears also. So these constitute about 32% of all meniscal tears. Uh, initially, it was thought that because the circumferential fibers are intact in a horizontal tear, uh, a, leaf, a leaflet resection, either the superior or inferior, uh, uh, was the treatment of choice and it was done routinely. Uh, but there have been a lot of uh, uh, biomechanical studies which has shown that even a, a single leaflet resection leads to increase in uh, contact pressure and peak pressure over the cartilage surfaces. Uh, so uh, they conclude, this study concludes that uh, a single leaflet resection is as good as a double leaflet uh, resection uh, itself. Uh, MRI, of course, is uh, a classical where you can see the uh, horizontal tear. The important thing here is to identify extension onto the articular surface. Uh, uh, many a times, the presenting symptoms with which uh, patients come with for a horizontal tear is uh, a cyst, a paramenisical cyst, uh, which is either on the medial or lateral side. That will be the presenting complaints for a horizontal tear. And many studies have shown that 96% uh, of uh, paramenisical cyst in a medial meniscus is always associated with a tear and about 98% in case of a lateral meniscus. Now, once uh, the failed uh, conservative method uh, surgery is decided and indicated, uh, obviously, you'll have to look into the other aspects like the instability, the alignment, those issues has to be kept in mind. And once it has decided about uh, the surgery for the horizontal tear, the principles uh, have to be adhered. The principle is same as for any other meniscal repair, uh, a proper anatomic reduction, uh, biologic stimulation is very important in a meniscus repair because as we know that uh, the inner aspects are all mostly avascular. So to uh, stimulate the healing or increase the healing rate, some kind of a biologic stimulation. And in the horizontal uh, tear, the more important thing is a, uh, a circumferential compression stitch to get that uh, compression between the two leaflets, superior and inferior leaflets. Now techniques... Uh, all the techniques can be utilized uh, all inside, inside out, and outside in, uh, depending upon which part of the meniscus you are repairing. So the posterior horn and the up to the body, all inside or inside out can be done. Whereas if the horizontal tear is extending more into the anterior half, then an outside uh, in technique can be very useful. Now the first uh, step uh, uh, in the uh, repair of a horizontal tear is identifying the pattern. Most of the time, you'll see that the horizontal tear is, is not a classical horizontal tear. You always have some component of a, a flap tear or a complex kind of a scenario. So once uh, we identify the tear, it's important to clear off these uh, uh, friable tissues and make a, a stable uh, part of the meniscus for further repair. Now, if it is difficult to access this area, sometimes you may have to do a pie crusting to have enough space so that you don't uh, damage the cartilage. You can use a shaver and a, a, a meniscal punch to vibrate these tissues. And once you're done with that, so you'll be able to uh, identify the tear pattern, having the horizontal cleavage tear uh, or the fish mouth appearance with the superior leaflet and the inferior leaflet. Now, uh, the stimulation part, uh, again, various methods are there. So one of them is, uh, of course, using a, a typical diamond rasp to rasp the area so that try expect some uh, uh, bleeding to happen from the capsular side. The other few modalities are maybe you can use a, a needle to define the capsule on the superior on the inferior leaflet area. The other method is of course uh, doing a marrow vent with the contral pick in the anterior part uh, in the intracondylar area anterior to the ACL. Uh, some surgeons also prefer to uh, inject uh, maybe PRP or even uh, some kind of a, a growth factor into this defect before you do the repair also. Now, coming to the repair part, uh, all inside, again, we have got two varieties of uh, which can be repaired. One is, of course, using the self-retrieving device, something like a knee scorpion, where you take bite uh, uh, towards the capsule and then tie the knots uh, intra-articularly. So basically take uh, uh, deep bites into the near the capsular portion of the cap, uh, meniscus tear, including both the leaflets, and then tie the knots so that uh, uh, the compression happens between them. So this can be progressed from the posterior horn area up to the body. And once we reach uh, uh, more anteriorly, maybe you can shift portals and uh, the instrument go and go into the other portal and scope 
uh, and vice versa, so that you can access up to the uh, anterior part. But if it extends too anteriorly, then maybe we may have to add uh, hybrid techniques like uh, using a uh, outside in technique to uh, uh, suture those areas also. The number of stitches, uh, it's about three to four millimeters gap, or the ideal way is maybe you can use a probe so that uh, the probe does not enter between two stitches. So that's where you achieve that. And that's uh, the end of the repair uh, of a horizontal repair. This is another method where uh, this was a complex tear after the uh, edges were debrided. The horizontal component was sutured using a all inside device. So where you take uh, one of the, uh, the anchors is passed up in the superior leaflet and the second one is passed in the lower leaflet. And once you tension it, you see that it compresses and closes the fish mouth. And of course, as you come more anteriorly, you can use either the inside out or outside in techniques to close the fish mouth. So this is a, a relook arthroscopy uh, where you can see that uh, the sutures are all well synovelized. And you can see that if the repair was more rounded, here you can see a nice apex of formation happening, uh, showing a good uh, healing of uh, the horizontal tear. So literature, a uh, lot of uh, literature uh, saying that horizontal repairs are as good as uh, any other repairs up to 78 to 80 percent uh, healing rate seen, and uh, biomedical data also biomechanical data also suggests that uh, uh, when a repair is done, the peak contact pressures are reduced as as compared to a meniscectomy alone. Of course, this is again a study showing up to 77 percent success of a uh, repair. So the take home message is uh, horizontal cleavage tears are repairable. Proper indications have to be taken. Uh, should adhere to the principles and technique. Any of the techniques is viable but uh, has to be done in a proper way.